Hello, Mark Red Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Mark Stubbles. Um, how are you doing today, Mark? Hello, Mark. I'm great. Thank you. So um, thanks for joining us. So, Mark, um, what part of the world are you located? Uh, right now, I'm in Tbilisi in Georgia. Okay. So I'm is... originally... Go ahead. I'm originally from the UK, from England. Awesome. So what took you from England to Georgia, the state, and that Georgia, the country? I... Well, I've been traveling um, all over the place for about four years now. I left England in uh, 2021 okay. um, during the, uh, the COVID mm. times. Yeah. Um, and I've been uh, all around Europe and the Balkans. And now I'm in, you know, Asia. Um, so, yeah, I've been traveling about all over the place awesome. ever since. Traveling is awesome. That's one of my favorite things to do my own ways. So, okay, why did you decide on Georgia, where you're, where you're located at? What, what was, drew you there? I heard it was nice here. Okay. I spoke to people that had been here before, and they told me it was great. So Good I decided enough. to come and have a look. I, I mean, uh, so is the predominant language English? No, the predominant language language is Georgian. Okay. And the, the second language is Russian. Wow. Um, but younger people tend to speak English, but the older people, they speak Georgian or Russian. Interesting. So do you ever have problems communicating with the, the locals? Not really. Um, I've been learning a bit of Russian on Duolingo. Okay. Um, and I live with someone that speaks Polish, so wow. we, we manage. And I was married to uh, someone from Slovakia, so okay. I speak um, a little bit of, you know, Slavic languages. So Wow. That is, I mean, I, I speak English, and not even sometimes very well. I mean, I, uh, sometimes I think I should learn Spanish. We have so many people that speak Spanish around here. So, um, but I, so are like Russian, are those hard, the, the other languages hard to learn or are they? Well, yeah, it's, it's very hard to learn and I have a funny alphabet. Um, I haven't tried to learn any Georgian because uh, I don't think I would stand any chance of learning any of that. And the uh -huh. alphabet is kind of squiggly. Like, yeah. um, it's a very unique language, apparently. I mean, that is, um, yeah, I just, I admire you for, for, I actually admire you for being in a country where they speak so many different languages. Um, rather than, especially in central Nebraska, it's basically English, it's pretty much. Um, but, so, Mark, what, what do you do for a living, or what is your calling where you're, where you're located at? Well, I'm a hypnotherapist. I work online uh, via Zoom. I help people overcome anxiety, okay. complex trauma, increase confidence, self-esteem. Most of my clients are based in the UK or the USA. So okay. I work with everyone online. So how what what took you to what was the start of that journey? What got you to that point? What you do today? Um, my, my own life, <laughs> okay. I, I had a lot of issues with anxiety. Um, I kind of, I was quite insecure, was looking okay. outside of myself to feel okay. I got married when I was far too young okay. to the wrong person. Um, we had a lot of relationship issues. The divorce um, was very difficult. As I said, she was Slovakian. So okay. when I left her, she wanted to return to Slovakia with her child. And that 
caused uh, all kinds of custody issues, which oh. went on for several years. Um, gave me PTSD. Uh, the, the, yeah, going backwards and forwards to court all the time, never knowing, you know, if I would ever see my daughter again was a very wow difficult for me yeah um, and then yeah i got into other relationships after that that just weren't very healthy okay. um, and i reached a point where i felt things needed to change um and i started asking myself you know why i kept having these problems mm -hmm. uh, and the main issue that was causing them as i said was my anxiety my need to look outside of myself to feel okay, okay. so i decided i needed to address that and as i got deeper into that okay. um, i started realizing that my inner child was very wounded um so i started doing inner child work um and yeah now i i help others with awesome. similar issues to what i experienced so you're an alchemist you took something that was not so good and you've turned it into really very good so so how do you go about dealing with your inner child i think i know i have issues with that probably still to this day how do you go about starting to deal with that? Well, there's a lot of misconceptions about inner child work. A lot of people think it means reliving memories from childhood mm -hmm. or, you know, recalling repressed memories from childhood and trying to heal uh, those things. Inner child work isn't about that memories can come up as a person starts to heal starts to feel you know better um right. their mind the theory of repression um sigmund freud said if if uh, something was too traumatic to deal with your mind would you know oh repress right. it so right. you would have to to deal with it um those memories can come up as a person starts to heal but really inner child work is just about becoming a good enough parent to yourself so as children awesome. we need what are known as good enough parents a good enough parent will provide unconditional love unconditional acceptance they'll be reliable a child will know that they're going to get their needs met no matter what um most people don't have good enough parents because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everyone carries their own trauma but we don't yes. heal we're either gonna reenact on others or find new people to repeat on us so most parents they don't you know they're not able to provide the things that a good enough parent would provide so yeah. <laughs> in a child work is about giving yourself those things and we do that through exercises through writing letters to the inner child writing wow. letters from the inner child to the adult self um, okay and hypnosis your mind can't tell the difference between a real or an imagined event so by okay. visualizing yourself the way you want to be you actually create new neural pathways in your brain the more you visualize yourself that way, the stronger those neural pathways become, the more you can start to become that person. Hypnosis can also be a very relaxing state. Um, okay. It doesn't have to be. Hypnosis is a focused state of attention, but when we do it therapeutically, uh -huh. um, you know, it can be very relaxing. The more a as it takes time to relax, the easier it becomes to relax, particularly if they've grown up with dysfunction. When a child experiences trauma, the emotional part of their brain increases in size and the 
making part of their brain decreases in size, making them more prone to issues with emotional dysregulation, anxiety, etc. Okay. Wow. I mean, so how did you learn all this? Did you go back to school to learn all this? Um, initially, okay, I did uh, hypnotherapy course. Um, <laughs> then when I first kind of started to look to make changes in my life, I, I felt very full, I felt very faulty. Um, and I had uh, issues with okay. dissociation. Um, I had, I used to experience flashbacks and all wow. kinds of things. And so I felt a lot of shame about those things, I suppose. Um, so I didn't want to go and see, you know, a, a counsellor and do the traditional right. type right. of talk therapy. Um, I did try a counsellor for a few sessions, but I didn't like counselling. I didn't have good rapport with, with the counsellor, so okay. I didn't continue that. So I started looking... Uh, for things that I could do on my own without having to talk to people. Uh, okay. And I came across hypnotherapy. I started listening to hypnosis recordings. Okay. And then as I got better, as I started to release toxic shame, again, if a child grows up with this function, they're going to internalize that dysfunction. They don't want to see their parents as bad because yeah. that would be life-threatening. So they internalize this function. They see themselves as bad, and it creates toxic shame. So as I started to heal, I started to release that stuff, I felt able to you know, go and see someone for hypnotherapy on a one-to-one -one basis. And then I did a short um, hypnotherapy course, which gave me certification uh, okay. with the General Hypnotherapy Standards Council. That's the largest governing body for hypnotherapists in the UK. Um, and yeah, from there, I just kept learning. I kept um, uh. doing courses. I think I've done probably, uh, I don't know, seven or eight hypnotherapy wow. courses. Um, I've done training in psychotherapy, CBT, NLP, wow. um, mindfulness, and again, hypnosis. Because it's a focused state of attention, it contains right. an element of mindfulness. So hip hypnosis is, it, it can help with a wide range of issues. It, it's very effective for so many reasons. Okay. Mindfulness, something that, especially here in the United States, I don't think we have much of it. You know, um, I think most of the time people aren't, well, we're always in a hurry. You know, I don't know if it's that way in Georgia where you're at, but the United States, it's no wonder, it's no wonder that people are so uptight because they're never mindful of what's going on. They're always to got to get this done, got to get this done. And, and, um, so how do you, if you were going to train somebody to have more mindfulness, what would you, what would you suggest? Have a regular relaxation practice. <laughs> I'm with you. Hey, I like that idea. Listen to <laughs> hypnosis regularly. And uh, yeah, talking about mindfulness, you know, when a child again grows up with this function grows up in an environment where they're constantly being called names put down they're going to internalize that it's going to create okay. a negative inner voice that's going to continue to attack them and put them down it's going to create negative self-talk and you yeah. can develop negative self-talk if you spend a long time in an abusive relationship as an adult yeah. But as a child, you're most susceptible to it because that is when your neuroplasticity is at its highest. No? Makes sense. Mindfulness can allow a person, you know, 
when we have thoughts, we identify with those thoughts. You know, we think that they, they make up who we are. So we try right. to fight against negative thoughts. And what resists not only persists, but becomes stronger. So people try and fight against those thoughts. Mindfulness is about just accepting what is. It's about okay. noticing it and allowing it to be. Uh, likewise, with emotions, everyone becomes shamed out of their emotions to some extent. Right. Um, you know, when we start school, we get told to shut up, sit down, yep. pay attention. We learn, we learn to suppress our emotions. Right. We learn to suppress anger. Anger is a very dangerous emotion to suppress because without it, you can't defend yourself. You can't defend right, right. boundaries. Um, and, yeah, when you try and suppress anger, it can often be misdirected at the wrong people. Again, you know, if you're a parent, you may misdirect it at your own children. Um, can result in rages, you know, etc. Right. Wow. I mean, this is all, I mean... So do you speak in front of people on this too? I do. I give okay. uh, workshops two or three times a week. Um, wow. Most of my workshops are centered around inner child healing and inner child work, but also give workshops on anxiety, um, depression, right. uh, public speaking. Okay. Um, and at the end, of every workshop we do a hypnosis session um and yes so that's that's awesome i mean so um how long have you been doing that part just since you've learned all the education how do you get started doing that stuff in front of people like if you do workshops i started, and I started in the covid era okay uh, yeah lockdowns you know people right. were isolated on their own in their houses um experiencing anxiety yes. Oh, yes. Um, and yeah you know when people who have issues with complex trauma you know mm -hmm. the worst thing for them is to be isolated and yes. you know, not be able to interact with other people so I started um, offering workshops. Okay. On, I listed them on Meetup. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing it on there ever since. Um, as I said, I do two to three workshops a week. Wow. And Meetup is good. I've just kind of learned of that recently. I like Meetup very much. So, so do you work one-on-one -on -one with people? I do. I work... Uh, one on one with clients, I invite okay. clients to uh, book a free call via my website, anxietyhypnotherapist.org. I also have a four week program. I have two programs one program uh, for stress and anxiety, okay. and one program for inner child healing. Um, they're group programs. So yeah, one on one or via group sessions. I okay. work with people. Awesome. I mean, that is so cool. So, do you have a podcast, or would you ever want to have a podcast dealing with this subject? Um, <clears throat> I kind of have a podcast. Um, okay. I have. I have a Spotify account anyway. Um, sure. Yeah, my my podcast, Anxiety Hypnotherapist. Um, I don't really do interviews i upload um hypnosis recordings okay, cool. sometimes i upload uh workshop recordings to the podcast also have a youtube channel uh where again i have hypnosis recordings i have uh, a ptsd uh hypnosis recordings probably my most popular recording on my youtube channel um and yeah I, I try and add content to them both regularly perfectly so so what is next what would you still like to do with what you're doing um well i'd like to 
to grow it. I'd like to yeah. speak inner child healing to the world. I'd like to, um, you know, get as many people as I can on my inner child healing program. I think that the, the inner child is at the root of, you know, all yes. the problems that we see in society today. I think that society is made up of people with wounded inner children and yes. it's it's creating a lot of uh, issues. So I think yes. inner child work and taking it to a, to a wider audience is where I want to go. Awesome. That's very good. So, um, so I have to ask, this is a dream catcher podcast. What did you want to be when you grew up? I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, you know, I think, <clears throat> I think I wanted to be a fireman at one point. Cool. Um, That's good. But yeah, I always wanted to travel to see the world. Yeah. Uh, and I was always quite good with words. So uh, I wanted to travel and do something with words, which is what I did. Perfect. So, I mean, do you, do you have, have you written a book or do you want to write a book? I tried um, writing a book, but my editor tells me it's rubbish. Um, so... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to work on that a bit more when I have more time. I struggle to uh, get what I want to say down into a book. Um, I do have some courses on Udemy, <laughs> um, but yeah, I will write a book at some point. Awesome. So, so you talk about traveling. Have you been to the United States or have you been to Nebraska? I'd be very surprised if you've been to Nebraska. I haven't been to Nebraska and I haven't <laughs> been to the United States. No, I might come to the United States next. I don't awesome. I don't know where I'll go. I don't really like the cold anymore. So um, uh, <laughs> probably wanna wanna go somewhere closer to the okay. equator. Uh, what for my next uh, place to visit? Yes. No, I mean, I would have been surprised if you'd come to Nebraska. And Nebraska's not the place to come in the winter, that's for sure, because it's definitely cold. And um, no, I like to go in the winter, I, you know, Florida, anywhere south, California. So um, I, those are some of my favorite places. So yeah, we need to, if you come to the United States, we need to meet up somewhere. We do need to do a meetup over here. Fantastic. Yeah, I I mean I will I will do some meetups uh definitely for you know the US time zone. If I'm in the US, I will okay. I will definitely do that. Um yeah, I might go to, to Florida if I do come to the US. Florida's awesome. You can tell I like Florida. I got my Florida cap on today. So actually I got everything Florida, Key West. I mean I could live in Florida, maybe not in the summer pretty humid there so so mark um before we end the podcast what are some other things you would like the audience to know before we end um i don't know <laughs> they can find me via my facebook group which is called inner child healing breaking free of cptsd uh my youtube channel mark stubbles uh my website address is anxietyhypnotherapist.org and I also have a Facebook page, okay. which is Anxiety Hypnotherapist. Um, awesome. So, yeah. Um, yes. And yeah, yes. what I'd like people to know, people that suffer with anxiety, negative self-talk, um, I would like them to keep in mind that what resists not only persists, but becomes stronger. So don't try and fight wow. against uh the negative feelings and things you don't want just allow them to be that's that's great wisdom because i could see that be people trying to not deal with it basically and that's that's very good wisdom and um yeah and there's lots of that out probably more than we realize in the world you know with everything oh there's just a lot of anxiety in the world period with everything going on so um there's always Absolutely. something 
Absolutely, yeah. Um, as I said, people learn to suppress those things, those feelings like there's something wrong with them, um, and that leads to more issues. Yes, and I can see that. And I can see. Um, I mean, do you ever run anybody um, with shame dealing with that? You know, that they think they shouldn't be dealing with that, or um... absolutely, yeah. Um, as I said, you know, toxic shame, like. Shame is an emotion and all emotions serve a purpose. Shame helps us function in society when we're adults, when we're children. Shame stops us from running away from our parents when we're right. in the supermarket. Toxic shame, um, you know, that's that's different. And that is the, the root cause, again, you know, of inner child issues when a child grows up without good enough parents even if you know just conditional love can still be traumatizing pushing a child to do well at school because you know you think it's going to benefit them in yep. the future that you know a parent might have the best of intentions but that's still not what the child needs the child needs to know that they're loved unconditionally if yes they don't get that then it, it's going to create toxic shame so yes toxic shame um again we, we address that with inner child work perfect and i can see you're very uh, i can see your passion in this i can see um yeah it, that you definitely have found your calling there and um your vibe comes across uh, i can't wait to meet you in person in the future you know when we're, when we're kind of we come together in the united states here so maybe it'll be on a beach somewhere, maybe even Florida. So, uh, but well, Mark, um, thank you for joining us on the Dreamcatcher podcast. Um, I'm. We know this has been an interesting journey on this with the podcast too, and uh, and thank you for being patient. Uh, I appreciate that greatly, um, and I look forward to keeping in touch and um, maybe touching back later on to see you know how things are going and. Um, follow up podcast maybe sometime, but thank you for being the guest today and um, you take care and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.